Let's talk to two senators, North Dakota Senator Kevin Kramer, Wisconsin Senator Ron Johnson. Gentlemen, welcome very much. Lots to talk about. Uh, I guess we'll start with Matt Gates. Um, came as a surprise today. I'm sure the left is going to go Adam Hammer and Tongs, but so what? Anyway, uh, Senator Johnson, what do you think of the Matt Gates appointment to the Justice Department? Well, it's an interesting pick. And I agree with you that President Trump is uh, operating at warp speed here in terms of filling out his administration, which he needs to do. Uh, he, he got elected on a mandate for significant uh, dramatic change in Washington, D.C., which is what we need. And I'm particularly looking forward to uh, what Elon Musk and Vivek are going to do with the uh, Department of Government Efficiency. Uh, I'm going to be cheering them along all the way and hope to work with them uh, to, to really accomplish some great things. Send it a little lukewarm on the Matt Gates part, Senator Johnson. Um, can, I, can I follow up and ask you, what are the odds that that will pass? I mean, um, I'm not sure what the case. I know some ethics charges have been made. Uh, I think they're still under investigation. I'm not 100 percent sure about that. Uh, it was reported that they are. But on the other hand, he's a five-term congressman on the uh, Judiciary Committee. Um, he's got the educational requirements. What do you make of it, Senator Johnson? Well, again, I've always appreciated uh, how, how he questions witnesses in hearing. So he's a smart person, obviously high, highly loyal to President Trump. Uh, again, I don't know enough about him in terms of his ethics charges, and that's why I say it's a somewhat interesting pick. Uh, we'll have to see how the, that all unfolds. We'll have a confirmation process here, and I'll have an open mind. Senator Kramer, you certainly would agree that the Justice Department and the FBI, which is inside the Justice Department, needs a thoroughgoing, 100 percent, top to bottom house cleaning. Don't you agree with that? Well, I'm pretty sure Ron agrees with that as, as well as I do. Of course, the problem with the Justice Department is besides being pretty corrupt in terms of their use of lawfare, which I find disgusting, they're dangerous. I mean, they carry subpoenas, badges and guns. And they also, you know, they have a means of, of uh, spying on all of us if they need to. Now, that doesn't mean they're all bad apples, but there's no question that the, the consequence of a corrupt Justice Department, uh, it, it frankly, needs a house thing. But I would add one other thing to all of this, Larry, and, and that is the American people want that. Mm. They, they're afraid of their government. And the Justice Department needs to be the people that we're least afraid of, not the people we're most afraid of. And, you know, I don't really find it shocking that these Trump appointees would be, wait for it, hang on, loyal. I mean, they'd yeah. be loyal to the president and loyal to the president's policies. I'm reading in almost every major newspaper, front page stories, including the Wall Street Journal, front page. Oh, he's appointing loyalists. Senator Kramer, of course he's appointing loyalists. He was just elected in a landslide. That's what you do. Well, this is what self-government is all about. We are special in that regard that we're self-governed. And obviously, he's, you're going to put people that agree with you. Remember, we all learned a pretty valuable lesson the last time we had this same scenario. When it was a little slower going into it. We had an, a new president who was not used to the political system. We had a Senate that was not used to being in the majority and having a, a Republican president. We all learned that lesson that time is of the essence. And I think Ron and I and our 51 colleagues are equally committed to the same thing. You know, Senator Johnson, another um, very interesting and I think inspired cabinet choice was Pete Hegseth. Uh, of course, I know him here from Fox, but he's you know, a very smart guy, very well-educated, Princeton and Harvard, uh, distinguished um, military man with any number of bravery medals. Um, he wrote a great book called uh, War Against the Warriors. Uh, he wants to root out DEI and uh, CRT and so forth. He's concerned about the way the Defense Department's going. Now, that's going to be controversial, I guess, although anybody knows Hexeth knows he's qualified to run the Pentagon. What do you make of that, Senator Johnson? That's a breath of fresh air, it seems to me, also. Well, you used the term that I would apply to, to the people that President Trump is picking, smart. These are highly intelligent people, and that's kind of the first criteria. And then you need people that want to aggressively uh, implement the president's agenda of dramatic change. I mean, the status quo is unacceptable here. With $35 trillion in debt, the federal government is just trampling over our freedoms, our rights, uh, certainly suppressing economic growth. Uh, we need regulatory relief. We need 
tax relief, and he's picking people who are going to you know, not be cautious, but be bold like he is. And in the end, he'll be responsible for his picks. You know, you know Senator- Larry, if I could, if I'd like to speak to the Pete thing, because I'm on the Armed Services Committee, yeah. I think he's a great pick. Yeah. He's got the Trump doctrine down. He's America first. But when you combine Pete Hegseth, who's a warrior's warrior, and by the way, the enlisted men and women of our military have been looking for a leader like Pete Hegseth. Remember, he's not going to do it alone. He needs a good deputy. There are lots, there are lots of operational skills that, that, that will be necessary. But this idea of a military that's so woke as to not be desired by, by recruits is really a, a problem for us. And having said all of that, I think you have to remember that a lot of these generals that are under some scrutiny salute upstream to the political leadership yeah. of the services and of the Joint Chiefs and all the way up to the Commander-in-Chief. I think we need to, we need somebody like Pete who can sort of rip through all this and pick out the phonies from, from the, the loyalists. But I also don't want to be too hard on the generals themselves because I do think that they're somewhat victims of really bad leadership. Well, okay, but um, uh, there may be an executive order that would have a review of the generals. Okay, there may be. Mm-hmm. Um, this sure. is not the first time, and there's stories in uh, various p- uh, publications. Uh, obviously, revered General George C. Marshall during World War II had a very similar review. He thought it was necessary after World War I, and then it was conducted uh, during and after World War II. It would not be the first time. There's blow, General, there, there may be. I, I don't know. I'm not in the Pentagon. I never served in the Pentagon. It's got to be, you know, if, if you're going to bring in a Matt Gates to oversee house cleaning and justice and FBI. Just uh, bear with me on this. You're going to bring mm-hmm. in a Pete Hegseth to oversee uh, house cleaning uh, in the Pentagon. Now, I'm not detracting from the bravery and valor of our uh, armed services. We just had Veterans Day and all that, keeping us free. Mm-hmm. But nonetheless, you need strong uh, people. You're, he's bringing in, Ms. Trump is bringing in um, Elon Musk and Vivek Ramaswamy. Uh, Senator Johnson, this is tailor-made for you. Vivek Ramaswamy, Elon Musk, uh, probably lots and lots of people, men and women from business, for a thoroughgoing review of the bloated federal government, okay? The entire agencies that shouldn't exist, regulations that are unconstitutional, spending that's unnecessary and corrupt, even spending that was authorized uh, and uh, never actually spent out. I mean, it's, you see the theme? What is Mr. Trump doing here? He wants to go through the entire federal government. Defense side, domestic side, all the agencies. We used to think of it as the uh, D.C. swamp. Remember what he said the night of his victory speech? He said promises made, promises kept. To me, gentlemen, I'll go to you, Mr. Johnson, first. I want Kevin Kramer to weigh in, too. These are promises made and promises kept. Absolutely. Larry, in 2019, the federal government spent $4.4 trillion dollars Last year, we spent $6.9 trillion. It's completely out of control. Uh, the, the DEI, the woke uh, ideology that uh, the Biden administration has inflicted on our government agencies, that needs to be ripped out of there. One of the more popular ads was uh, the one that said, she's for they, them, I'm for you. Mm-hmm. President Trump is for us. He's mm-hmm. for the American public, not for big government. It's time to shrink the size and scope and the cost of government and its influence over our lives. And you know what, Senator Kramer, one more. I just thought of this. I should have raised it earlier. We are even reading, incredible, the weaponization of FEMA, right? So, and it wasn't just this one woman. It was not. Now, she's blowing the whistle on the uh, higher-ups. They weaponized FEMA against anybody that was for Trump, anybody that had Trump signs on their lawn. I mean, that is so... it gets you so angry that they had taken things so far, no wonder the American voters threw them out. That's exactly right, Larry. They weaponized all of government. And remember, government is a really bad weapon. It's contrary to everything that our country was built on. It's contrary to everything that... that conservatives and moderates and uh, patriotic Americans even believe they have gone so extreme. But I would, I, I, on the Elon Musk uh, Vivek uh, uh, project, by the way, I think is wonderful. I'm with Ron. I'm going to be cheering them on. The first person I'd call if I was them is Ron Johnson. He's done more investigation on the bureaucracy than anybody I know. The next thing I would do is go through those recent court cases, you know, overturning Chevron, uh, you know, the, the uh, major questions doctrine from West Virginia versus EPA, mm-hmm. Waters of the United States. If you look 
at those rulings and the opinions of the majority judges, they pretty much have already yes. neutered much of the, yes. the, the, uh, the regulatory state. And what we need to do and what they need to do, they need to identify all of those things that are no longer, not only not necessary, but not even legal. We need to defund them. We can do that with budget reconciliation and defund. For example, Samuel Alito's Waters of the United States ruling, he basically, by definition, eliminated about 80% of the federal jurisdictional waters. That tells me there are about 80% of the people at the EPA and 80% of the people at the Corps of Engineers that deal with water that no longer have anything to do. We ought to just get rid of them all. So, Larry, the first thing they ought to do is find out how many government workers are actually coming into work. Mm. You know, they, they all started teleworking during COVID, mm. and they haven't come back to the office. Mm. Uh, I'd be a little concerned if I wasn't showing up at the office now with the Elon and Vivek are on the on the job here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what's so wonderful about that also is all in salary, benefits, pensions, and health care, they make several times more than comparable private sector workers. And that's been proven up and down the line. And they're probably not even coming to work. And Senator Kramer, I'm flat out of time, but I just couldn't resist this one for you, sir, because I know you spend a little time on the banking committee. So yeah. it, tur <laughs> it turns out you're ready. Get ready for this one. Here it comes. Wait a second. Here it comes. Ninety one percent of the political donations from the Federal Reserve, guess where? Democrats, 91. That's our nation's central bank, protecting the value of our money, keeping price stability for middle and lower income working for 91% of them gave money to Democrats. Now, I gotta tell you, Senator Kramer, there's something very wrong with that. You get the last word. Well, Jay Powell hides behind independence whenever it's convenient, and then he he t trots out these democratic um, agendas all the time in terms of of his uh, positions on on monetary policy. And I just think it's time for him to go. You know, there's this big controversy about whether Donald Trump should fire him. The reality is, he should fire himself. He should be ashamed. He should just step down out of respect for the new president. Not, not only that, but his mishandling of inflation was mm. outrageous. Yeah. Again, I think that was a, a, an attempted favor to the Democrats that blew up in their faces. Yes, sir. Gentlemen, I appreciate it very much. Senator Kevin Kramer, Senator Ron Johnson, thank you ever so much, fellas. Talk soon.